my freaking gosh, this Scorpio lunar eclipse is not effing around. I'm sure you can feel it. It is deep, intense, kind of dark, but we are going to talk about it. I am super excited to talk about it and talk about how to move through it, how to get through it, and what to do, and what's coming for your particular rising sign. As always, please watch the beginning of this video because if not, you're missing out on a lot. And hi, how have you guys been this eclipse season? Definitely let me know down below what the fuck is going on with you. I really want to know how are you feeling these energies? What is on and popping in your world? I am just so excited to be doing this video right now. Hopefully you can feel my energy, my excitement through the screen, just radiating. Hopefully it gives you a little dose little kickstart of excitement during these crazy times. Let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> okay, so we are basically in Halloween in the middle of effing spring. That is what the Scorpio lunar eclipse is like, okay? It is bringing some shocks, possibly some crisis, possibly some disturbances, but we're gonna get through it, okay? We always do. We are still alive and kicking here at the end of the day. And yes, this is a little bit of a darker, grungier energy, and it really is about revealing the blockages in our lives, revealing the lack within our lives, revealing the insecurities within our lives, revealing what we don't wanna face or what we've been putting off, what's going on in the shadows, what's been going on behind the scenes that we haven't quite wanted to look at. It's really digging up the skeletons in our closets. And so it's time that we face something and it can feel intense, it can feel dark, it can feel scary, it can feel like, holy shit, I don't know if I can handle this, what is going on? So if you are there, especially this weekend is when we're really gonna be feeling these energies. I'm filming this on Friday, but you'll probably see it on Saturday. But this weekend is when we're really gonna be feeling the, these energies. And so if you are there, we're gonna talk about how to move through it in just a sec. And also do remember that eclipses ripple for six months. So it doesn't mean that you're gonna be in six months of hell. Uh, if you are really you know, feeling kind of pulled down by this energy right now, but, it is like a six month cycle where you're letting go of baggage. You're letting go of dead weight is how I've been describing it over on Instagram. It's kind of like to be able to expand and create the life that you want with the North Node in Taurus, which is very much about creating and really expanding in, the, in terms of beauty and the things that are lovely, the things that feel good, the things that we want to manifest, the things that we want to create in the physical world. In order to do that, we have to let go of the things that are weighing us down because if we get to the things that we actually freaking want if we build the life that we want if we create the life that we want and we have all this dead weight we have all these past skeletons in our closet we're not going to be able to fully enjoy what we what we're creating with all this dead weight right so if you show up to this new life, this new thing, with all this old shit, with all these old triggers, with all these old insecurities that are clogging you up, right? That are like clogging your internal energetic pipes and one little thing happens or one little thing goes wrong or one little thing snaps, there you go, right? You self-sabotage, you literally uh, just completely cause a, a scene where you get super triggered, where you subconsciously retract, you become small, you abandon ship, whatever the case may be, right? And so we can't handle that next level version. We can't handle this life that we're wanting to create without letting go and releasing a lot of this dead weight that no longer serves us, right? This dead weight has been accumulated from past versions of us that we no longer are. So why are we carrying it? We're carrying like trash around with us. We are carrying a trash bag around with us and trying to like create a nice fancy home for ourselves, right? Like, like, and this is a metaphor obviously, but you can't bring your trash bag of moldy old shit that's been sitting in your storage closet for freaking ever to your brand new nice ass house. <laughs> you can't, right? Like it's it's like why would you do that? That would be very freaking silly, right? And you can't fully enjoy your new house if you have all of this old molded stuff that you're bringing in there because then it's just going to get moldy in your new house and then it, your new house is going to smell and it's going to be like 
what are you doing? You know, so that is basically the Scorpio lunar eclipse. It is bringing an element of disruption in our lives to show us what we are still clinging to, what we are, what we need to let go of, where we are self-sabotaging ourselves, where we're feeling lack, where we're feeling unworthiness, where we have insecurities, where we've had to protect ourselves out of scarcity or out of survival. And we no longer need to do that, right? how can we live how can we live the lives we truly freaking want if we are holding on to dead stuff if we are holding on to dead versions of us if we are holding on to to old wounds and old insecurities and just old shit that does not freaking serve us anymore right so we have to let this shit go we have to let this shit go we have to face this shit we can't keep running from it. We can't keep ignoring it. We can't keep shoving it back in the storage closet, right? It's time to clean. This is literally like skeletons in the closet vibe. This lunar eclipse is shining a bright light saying, look here. It's like exposing what's hidden, right? In so many ways, it's exposing what's hidden in possibly disruptive ways or ways that cause a lot, cause us a lot of tension or that can feel scary or that can feel a little bit stressful. Now, I know that's not the most positive news, right? But this lunar eclipse is in Scorpio and it's a south node lunar eclipse. So it is very karmic and it is about the past and it is about the shadow side. So we have to get real for a sec, right? We can't bypass the shitty shit, especially when we're attached to it, especially when it's attached to us, especially when it's inside of us right so we have to get real with ourselves and say okay yes this is shitty this is like an old me thing right like this is like an old uh, defense mechanism this is an old wound this is an old insecurity that i've been kind of dragging around with me but this new me is not this vibe this vibe is not this new me and is not what i'm trying to create in my life so we need to deal with this it's time you have the power to get through this right and that is the other side of scorpio it may cause you to get vulnerable. It may cause you, it may test your strength. It may cause you to really step into your power or to really surrender to something. And that's another thing. This lunar eclipse is trining Mars and Neptune who are conjunct at the time of this lunar eclipse. And Mars is the ruler of this lunar eclipse. So it's like a, a massive triangle going on here. And we also have Jupiter and Aries now. Mars is other home sign. So we have a lot of Mars energy. Right? So we're seeing where we're resisting, where we're fighting, where we're trying to be, you know, broken warriors to protect ourselves from something that isn't even a threat anymore. So where can we let things go? We will feel so much better once we can surrender, once we can stop fighting, once we can release the tension and find a way to move into and face those emotional deep things that yes are uncomfortable but we have to stop being scared of discomfort we have to stop because we are more fucking powerful than that right like we are more powerful than that and life yes at times can be uncomfortable that's part of it but we've likely been through a lot worse than this and we're gonna make it through we're gonna be all right so how can you face this stuff to let go this is where the healing happens, right? When we surrender fighting and we allow ourselves to let go of the built up tension, the built up stress that's blocking us from creating the beauty, the abundance, the fulfillment, the love, the joy that we really truly want. So Saturn is also in a square with this eclipse, which also tells me that this is a very testy energy. So whatever triggers come up this week, just remember they are your own. No one can heal your triggers for you, right? You have to go inside and really become super aware of why you're triggered and what wound is triggering it, where you feel not good enough, where you feel insecure, where you feel unworthy where you don't want to face something, where you don't want to look at something. This is a very triggering lunar eclipse. And likely you'll be triggered by someone that means well or someone that really didn't mean it or know that that was a trigger for you, right? And so you have to get very aware of your subconscious reactions here because they could feel they could feel a lot more intense than usual and be a lot more intense, intense than usual. You could be noticing them 
a lot more. And if you're feeling a lot of frustration, if you're feeling uh, a lot of annoyance, if you're feeling a lot of resistance and tension and stress, it's because you're fighting something, right? And so where can you relax, surrender to it, and let go of it? And I know all of that sounds super fucking cliche, I'm aware, but that is this energy. That is literally what the chart is saying. Like if this chart could talk, that is what it would freaking say. It is like just so literal. It's so easy to read. It's like, this is what's fucking happening. So we have to let go. This is a South node eclipse. So it is about letting go and it's about dealing with karmic debts, right? When we don't face something, when we don't deal with something, when there's when we feel like we're lacking something in our lives and, and we don't want to deal with it or we don't want to see it or we don't want to face it or we're ignoring it or we're putting it off or we feel it, fear it or whatever, that starts causing debts. And so as Alan Watts says, on the when you first take step towards your liberation, you will find that all of your debts all of your karmic debts, all your karmic debt creditors show up at your doorstep, right? And this is because right before we can expand and truly build the life that we want, to truly ground in the life we want, to truly step into the life we want, there is somewhat of a contraction. There is somewhat of a feeling of getting small, of shedding, of purging, right? And so this is because to be able to expand, we have to shed the dead weight right? Just like a balloon. If you have a, you know, some kind of anchor tied to a balloon, then it can't, it can't expand. It can't like fly, right? And so we are shedding the anchor, the old anchor that is no longer aligned with us so we can fly, so we can expand even farther because we can't fully, we won't be able to fully enjoy where we're going or fully maintain where we're going without facing this stuff. Because if this stuff comes up where we're going, we won't be able to handle it. And we would, not be as grateful for it, number one, but also we wouldn't be able to maintain where we're going if we're constantly getting triggered all the time, if we have all these insecurities. And that's another thing. These are insecurities and that are holding us back from where we're going. So if we got to where we wanted to go and we were still insecure, we would easily self-sabotage it or throw it away because we didn't think we deserved it. All of these things, right? Like all of these beliefs and insecurities and wounds that have been holding us back from getting to where we wanna go like this whole time. So we have to get rid of these things, right? We have to move through them, we have to face them. This isn't about fighting them. This isn't about resisting them. This isn't about beating them. This is about surrendering to them, feeling them and letting them be becoming one with them, integrating with them. Because by integrating with them, by no longer fighting them, they no longer have power over you. Therefore, you integrate with them, they become you, and then you can allow them to move through your body, which then allows you to release them and release the baggage, right? We are releasing the baggage. We cannot take it to the, to the amazing, beautiful places that we're going. So, Hopefully this was helpful to you. We are gonna go ahead and start on each rising sign. Anyways, I love you guys. Make sure you comment your rising sign down below if this helped you. And also, uh, if you want to find different ways of working with me and the different things that I'm doing, check the description below. Everything's always down there. And let's go ahead and start on the zodiac signs and really your rising sign. <laughs> Alrighty, Scorpio, starting with you, since it is a lunar eclipse and you your sign so you're definitely going to be feeling this lunar eclipse <laughs> this is definitely going to be affecting you your identity what you want who you are if you are a scorpio rising this is really 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 about shedding dead weight if you didn't watch the beginning of this video i highly recommend you do because i went very deep into this and this is definitely you if you're a scorpio rising so you are really shedding anything that no longer aligns with who you are now. This lunar eclipse could be bringing up a lot of karmic debts for you, a lot of karmic stuff from childhood or different patterns, different ways that you self-sabotage, different ways that you resist, that you fight, different, 
you know, different resistance uh, and different situations with resistance in regards to your family, your home life, your living situation. There could be something that's like really been holding you back in terms of your home life, your living situation and your personal life, your past. You know, this is really getting rid of a lot of past lack, a lot of past baggage, like things that have just been holding you down or that have felt heavy or that have felt like an anchor, like things that maybe you've been trying to shove away or not look at or not deal with, you know? And so this is a massive shadow work, lunar eclipse happening, Scorpio. This is really shedding a light on things that you need to let go of, things that you need to shed, things that you need to purge. This is literally for you, Scorpio, like a shake, snake shedding its skin, right? In order to have the relationships you want, in order to have the, you know, uh, reputation that you want in the world, in order to go after the things that you want in your life, in your social life, in your relationship life, in your marriage, to, to really liberate yourself, you have to face these wounds that are happening within you. You have to shed this, these old versions of you that no longer serve you, right? And by doing this is really tapping into your inner child, right? Because this, this lunar eclipse is trining Mars, your ruling planet, and Neptune in your fifth house. So this is really inner child work. This could also be sexuality related. Maybe there are some, you know, sexual traumas that are coming to the surface or that have really dictated who you are or uh, for too long, you know, some sexual blockages. This could also be, you know, a lot of relationship stuff coming to the surface, a lot of stuff in, with, you know, maybe being a parent, children, things like this. But it could also just be that you really need to surrender into your inner child into the little boy or girl within you that just really freaking needs you right now, right? That just really needs you to be there for that version of yourself. So how can you be there for yourself right now? How can you surrender to this? How can you loosen up? How can you stop fighting, right? Because what you're fighting is the childhood version of you or a younger version of you, a past version of you. And so maybe stop fighting and allow yourself to be vulnerable. And through that, you find such healing, right? Just stop. Just stop fighting. I just feel very called to tell you that. Release. Surrender. Feel whatever it is that you're trying to feel because fighting it is pointless with Mars conjunct Neptune. It's futile. And so you're seeing in your life where a lot of these old defense mechanisms, these old behaviors have become futile for you. They're no longer fun. And for you to be able to tap back into that playful side, uh, that, that side of you that wants to have fun, that wants to do things, you have to release and surrender. And that's when you can start tapping back into your playfulness, your, your, your creativity, your inner child, all of these types of things, right? So that is what I feel super called to tell you for this lunar eclipse. Now, do remember this energy is going to ripple for six months. So this could be kind of like the start of an ending that is fulfilled in six months from now, right? It could be showing you these different blockages and showing you these different things for you to start working through them. And then it comes full circle later this year. So definitely let me know down below, Scorpio, if that resonated. If you would like to see more from me, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post on there every single day. I also have a Patreon where I post every single week, at least a couple times a week. And we do the live weekly portals. I uploaded an example of that last week here to the channel where we get super deep e each week and talk about the current energy and how to move through it. So if you would like to follow me more, just see my description down below. I'd love to have you. And uh, follow me on social media at the least so you can keep up with me. So moving on to Sagittarius, darling. So Sagittarius, this lunar eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So this is like major shadow work. <laughs> major, major shadow work. This is really showing you where things are hidden in the shadows, you know, where you have these self-sabotaging or self-defeating behaviors, where you have these patterns that are working against you, right? That are like literally working against you, where there's like, they're likely very subconscious, they're likely emotional, they're likely triggers, and they're likely these like self-fulfilling prophecies that you get into, these different triggers, these different cycles, these different patterns that are really being exposed right now. And so where can you work through these things? Where can you heal? The 12th house is also about healing. 
It's also about surrender. It's a lot about the things I've been talking about throughout this whole video. If you didn't watch the beginning, definitely make sure to go back and watch that after you watch your sign here. But this is massively, massively, massively about surrender. Now, you may feel some tension or some resistance or some stuckness or like something is holding you back in terms of your physical reality or your like day-to-day -day life or the people that are in your day-to-day -day life, your environment, your local environment. It may feel like something here is like stuck or holding you down, like maybe even to a physical area for some of you. And so this could also be shedding some light on this where you're just feeling stifled, I feel here. You're just feeling stifled. You're just maybe feeling like possibly cornered or, or trapped in some area of your lives. And I hope that that's not the case, but that's just what's coming through possibly for some of you. And there needs to be a level of surrender here, surrendering to your roots. How can you get back to your roots? How can you accept love in from those that you love, your family, your personal life? You know, where can you make time for yourself? You need to really, really go within. We have your 12th house very active and we have your fourth house very active. So this is really about going inside. You may not be too social this week or maybe maybe that's it. Maybe you had like a social commitment or some event or something planned, but now you're starting to feel like, I just wanna be alone. I just wanna like retreat <laughs> and do my own thing and, and kind of be by myself kind of isolate yourself, you know, this is a time to really make space for you. This is a time to really go within. You know, you want to have these different things when it comes to work, when it comes to your day-to-day -day life, when it comes to your routines, your schedules, your health regimen, like all of these different things. But there are all these blockages. There's like this baggage that's like holding you back and, and you know, the, this like, you know, possibly these commitments or this certain area or environment that, that feels stuck. And so, I feel like this lunar eclipse is really exposing what you need to heal and what's been going on behind the scenes with you that's leading to these different patterns or behaviors or you know self-sabotaging behaviors maybe some secrets that you've been keeping or you know skeletons in your closet types of vibes you know so let me know down below if this relates Sag I would really love to hear how you're feeling this uh, lunar eclipse energy and what if you're noticing any of these things come up and if not what are you noticing and so uh yeah if you would like to follow me on social media definitely make sure you do that i post a lot on my social medias i have an instagram i have a facebook and uh, i post on instagram like daily and facebook like almost daily so definitely check me out over there i'd love to have you i also have a patreon and i have a lot of different things that i'm doing right now uh, a program that is uh, that i've been talking about goddess mode stepping into the goddess energy and into your power so check all that out down below if you're interested and we are going to move on to capricorn so for capricorn darling this lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of friends and groups and acquaintances and all of that so basically this is a time where you are seeing possibly a lot, a lot is being exposed in terms of your social life or in terms of your aspirations or in terms of, you know, what's going on with other people, right? So this could be kind of an intense time for your social life or for friend groups or for different groups and networks that you're a part of. Any kind of network that you're a part of could be online or whatever, right? So this is exposing a lot. It's exposing a lot as well in terms of your shadow, in terms of where you wanna go in the world, your place in the world, what you wanna do in the world, etc. And it's also possibly bringing up where you may be feeling stuck or there may be a level of like stuckness in terms of your money, uh, your income, you know, the possessions and the things that you have, right? So anything that you own, anything that you have, you know, Saturn is squaring this lunar eclipse. So there may be something stuck there. There may be like a commitment or something holding you back from really doing what you want to do, or you could be feeling like kind of contracted around money, or there could be some kind of resistance around money or wealth or something like that. And, you know, this lunar eclipse could be exposing something or adding to that in some way. So it really is about those surrendering, surrendering to the moment, right? With Mars and Neptune conjunct trining this lunar eclipse in your 11th house and Mars and Neptune being in your third, this is really about surrendering to the present moment, being in environments that really support you and that really feel loving and that really feel like, 
you know, where it's not tension, where it's not stress, where it's not a fight. Maybe you need to have a conversation. Maybe you need to, you know, you know, do something that releases tension in some way, right? Maybe you need to, you know, this could be about like going on a short trip or going to an event where doing something that just allows you to release that tension, allows you to let loose, allows you to, you know, work through a lot of these things to surrender. Uh, and so I think that's what this really is about, to, to really get to your creative goals and the things that you want that bring you joy. It's like you have to release some old wounds, some old shadows, some old baggage around how you introduce those things to the world and the people that you're involved with. So hopefully this resonated, Capricorn. Definitely let me know down below if it did, if any of this is happening in your life. And if not, then let me know down below what you do see coming up. I'd really, really be interested to know truly. And so if you would like to, I would love to have you follow me on Instagram. I post on there literally daily. I also post on my Facebook uh, page a lot. So definitely follow me on social media to keep up with me. I would love to have you. Uh, and so, yeah, if you would like to work with me further or see what all I have going on, see what all I'm doing, the group programs, the classes, all of that, then check my description down below. And we are going to move on to Aquarius. So Aquarius, this lunar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your 10th house of career, your public image, what you want out in the world, the the legend that you want to leave behind. You know what I mean? Like, what do you want for yourself in this life? What are your goals? What are you building towards? Where's your direction? Where are you going? Right? What are you building? The legacy that you're building is what I meant to say before. Sorry. But your professional life, your reputation, like all of that. Right? So this lunar eclipse is bringing up possibly some some shadowy things here, right? Some things that you need to face, some shadow wounds or some baggage or some secrets or some mystery, some intensity. Something's coming up here that's really like, okay, you need to face this. Like wherever you're headed in terms of your life goals and what you're, what you're going towards, your career, your public image, like what you wanna be in the world. Where do you have insecurities and wounds around this? Where are you sabotaging something, right? And this is also squaring Saturn in your sign. So it's like, where are you holding your own self back, right? Where are you like doing certain things to yourself or where are you sabotaging yourself in terms of what you want, your goals, what you wanna do in the world? your public image, your reputation, what you're building towards in your life, like lifelong goals that you have. It's like you're trying to create a sturdy foundation. You're trying to create roots for yourself. You're tr you've been really focused on bringing more beauty and abundance and fulfillment and liberation in terms of your home life and your roots and, and your family life and, and all of that. But, you know, there's something that needs to be let go of in terms of your reputation or where you're going or certain goals or whatever. And so this Scorpio lunar eclipse is really exposing something about, you know, certain doubts or certain fears or certain like scarcity mindset ways <laughs> of your career, of your goals and where you may hold yourself back or where you may resist, right? Because it's squaring Saturn in your sign. So where are you like blocking yourself? Right? Like, where are you like cock blocking yourself, <laughs> basically? So, uh, also, this lunar eclipse is trining Mars and Neptune in your second house. So, this could also be like a time where you're really letting go of something in terms of self worth, value, where you are surrendering to the flow of money, or where you are looking more at your money in some way or you know needing to let go of some kind of expectations with money or something like that with wealth so that is what i see for you aquarius definitely let me know down below if this related at all and if not then if you know what you are noticing coming up with this lunar eclipse i would really love to hear what you guys are seeing and how this lunar eclipse energy is affecting you and then also if you would like to i would love to have you follow me on instagram i post on there all the time i'm super active on there so if you like my vibe then definitely make sure to follow me on ig and then i also have a facebook if you'd like to follow me on there if you'd like to see what all i'm doing or find out different ways to work with me then see the description below and yeah i love you guys i will see you guys in my other videos bye all righty pisces this lunar eclipse is happening in your ninth house baby so this is bringing up a lot of shadows blockages 
fears in terms of your beliefs, your purpose, politics, corruption in the world and what's going on, you know, externally and what, you know, things with like educational pursuits and legal matters and, you know, travel and things like that. So any blockages, fears, insecurities, you know, intense situations that could be being exposed here could be coming up if you're a Pisces rising. Now, there's also a square to Saturn in your 12th. So where are you possibly subconsciously holding yourself back or self-sabotaging yourself in terms of your educational pursuits, what you want in the world, what you want for your purpose, what you, you know, what gives you meaning and purpose in life and, and where have you maybe lost the trust or where have you maybe had doubts about, you know, the things that you're building towards. This could also be bringing up religion for some of you if you're a Pisces rising and maybe some fears or corruption or insecurities involving religion or, you know, anything to really do with belief systems, politics, etc. So you've been really trying to create a sturdy foundation, a more grounded foundation, a more like, you know, practical but, but beautiful, uh, abundant foundation in terms of your environment and what you love and, you know, the things that you want to create in your environment, the way that you address things, express yourself and think about things and any hobbies or skills that you're cultivating. And so this could be a time where you're, you know, this lunar eclipse is shining a light on maybe something more broad or something more bigger that you've been kind of going back and forth with or that, that somehow has been blocking you in some way uh, behind the scenes or that you haven't wanted to deal with in some way. Now this lunar eclipse is also school, or I'm sorry, trining Mars and Neptune in your sign. So this is about surrender. So if you've been maybe feeling fearful or if you've been maybe feeling a lot of doubt or insecurity or stress or tension surrounding world events or surrounding, you know, belief systems or surrounding, you know, some some karmic debts that maybe you feel have been holding you back from your purpose or legal matters or, you know, uh, <laughs> educational pursuits, etc then this is a time where you can really tap into that surrender energy with Mars and Neptune in your sign, where you're really seeing the futility of a lot of the tension, a lot of the fighting, a lot of the lack, a lot of the scarcity, a lot of the fear in the world, and where you know you may be able to calm the waters, where you may be able to do something about that. This looks like also possibly like a higher calling that possibly comes from you know, it, it may come from a place of disturbance or it may come from like you seeing something that's disturbed and then feeling called to help heal it in some way or help in some way, right? So some of that, that could be true for some of you, maybe not all of you, but, but yeah, so this is really about tapping into that surrender and really seeing where you have power and what you are powerless over, right? Like what, what you can control and what you can't basically, right? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates. Jupiter is also in your second house now, so get ready to expand with money and resources. That is good news. Uh, yeah, so follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I post on there daily, so you do not want to miss. Uh, you do not want to miss out. I also have a Facebook page. And if you'd like to work with me further, see what I'm offering at the moment, definitely make sure to check the description down below. Sign up for my email list so you don't miss out. And yeah, I love you, Pisces. I will see you guys in the next one. Let's move on to Aries, baby. So Aries, this lunar eclipse for you is happening in your eighth house of finances, other people's money, monetary and financial like exchanges, debt, resources. So this lunar eclipse is bringing up a lot of karmic debt uh, if you're an Aries rising and possibly a lot of fears or things that need to be addressed. It's possibly exposing things that maybe have been out of your control or maybe were at one point in your control, but maybe you've been shoving them aside. Like this is really kind of the skeleton in the closet type of vibes, right? It's really exposing certain uh, tensions or stresses or issues that need to be addressed and faced, right? It's like we need to finally face these things and we need to surrender what we can't control or what we are powerless over with the moon trining Mars and Neptune. So this could also be bringing up a lot of, you know, mortality, you know, questions or thinking or feelings or something along those lines. And we could also be feeling like maybe there's been something in our way in terms of society or the world or our social lives or feeling kind of like blocked from our aspirations because maybe there's something where we're feeling that we're lacking or there's something that 
is making us feel somewhat in debt, you know, even if it's not necessarily money, maybe it's just in terms of energetically, like we feel like we are in lacking in somehow, or we have insecurities or something like that. So this lunar eclipse is really bringing up what needs to be faced with these more shadowy things that have been kind of swept aside or not faced or not looked at. And a lot of these things can feel very karmic and faded at the same time. And so we, you know, a lot of you have likely been really having a focus on your finances and your money and your wealth and the things that you want to own, like liberating yourselves financially, liberating yourselves with what you own and ownership. And so this Scorpio lunar eclipse is really coming in and saying, hey, like, that's amazing. You can get there. But where, what do you need to shed first? Right. What do you need to how can you let go of this over here? Because that will help you get to that over there. Right. That will help you liberate yourself financially. That will help you you know, have independence in your ownership or whatever, right? So hopefully this resonates, Aries. Definitely let me know down below. You can do a lot of healing work with this as well with Mars and Neptune in your 12th. And yeah, follow me on Instagram. If you do not already, I post over there daily. It's linked down below. I also post on my Facebook. And if you want to work with me farther, everything is linked down below. I'd love to have you. Uh, you can also sign up for email updates so you know what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this lunar eclipse is happening in your seventh house of relationships, you know, close people in your life, commitments, contracts, agreements. So these are the topics you can likely see coming up around this lunar eclipse. So any close relationships or contractual relationships or agreements or financial relationships or energetic exchanges within your life can really be a huge topic. And this lunar eclipse can be showing you where you may need to purge old karmic situations or old karmic dynamics. It may not be a person. For some of you, it could. This definitely could be a person that you're maybe purging or moving on from or releasing from your life. But for others of you, this could just be like, maybe it's like a karmic dynamic that you need to transform, that you need to shift uh, because you've been doing a lot of focusing on you. You've been really focused on yourself and, you know, building and creating the life that you want to have and being abundant and fulfilled and, and liberating yourself in so many ways. And so where do you have these certain karmic debts with relationships? Where do you have these certain fears, insecurities, feelings of lack, you know, blockages, self-sabotaging old dynamics, or where do people around you exhibit those behaviors? So that's what really, like, that's what this is really about for Taurus. And this lunar eclipse is trining Mars uh, and uh, Neptune conjunct in your 11th house. So this is about really like letting go and surrendering and looking at like the big picture here. And also this could be like a releasing or letting go of certain friends or social connections or, or people. Um, this could also possibly be maybe seeing things that, you know, seeing certain dynamics and relationships and connections within your life that are maybe futile right? Or maybe not adding anything to your life anymore. And so this is a major time for relationships for Taurus and, and really letting go of possibly certain connections or at least certain ways of connecting, if that makes sense. So definitely let me know down below, Taurus, if this resonates. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. If not, if it doesn't resonate all the way, I'd love to hear what you are noticing coming up in your life. I would really like to hear about it. So anyways, make sure to follow me on Instagram and my social medias. They are linked down below. I post on there all the time. So if you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube and see everything that I talk about, all the things that I post, then definitely make sure to do that. If you would like to work with me, also make sure to see the description below for the current programs and stuff that I'm doing at the moment. So I love you, Taurus. Thank you for watching. And we are going to move on to Gemini. Alrighty, Gemini, welcome to your uh, Scorpio lunar eclipse horoscope. So this lunar eclipse for you is happening in your sixth house of your day-to-day -day work, your job, your maintenance, your day-to-day -day shit, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep up with your lifestyle, to keep up with yourself, to keep up with the things that you need to do, you know, like health, your routines and, you know, work stuff that you have to do. So a lot of those things can be really coming to the forefront and you can really be seeing where you maybe have certain 
things that are holding you back, certain shadow aspects or work could be getting really intense or there could be some intense stuff coming up in terms of like maintenance issues, like things that you need to do to maintain the lifestyle that you wanna have. And so you could really be noticing these topics like feelings of lack or insecurity or certain fears that need to be faced. So this lunar eclipse is really exposing, it's really putting a light on the things that you need to face that may not feel so good right now, but that will lead you to the liberation and freedom that you seek, the fulfillment that you seek, right? So another thing is that you could be really experiencing a lot of resistance in terms of your belief systems or maybe the way in which you know you view society or that you feel society views you or maybe other people in your life or educational pursuits or politics religion belief systems etc so there could be like a certain level of resistance here in some way or some legality situation where you feel like something's holding you back from really facing these things or being able to face these things in some way so i really see here that this is about kind of looking at things from a higher perspective and really surrendering um, and trusting, right? Like Mars and Neptune are conjunct and they are trining the moon in Scorpio, this lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So it's really telling me that you're really seeing where you may self-sabotage yourself or, or sabotage your health in some way or sabotage your routines and you know your day-to-day -day maintenance, your, your day-to-day stuff that you keep up with in some way and where you need to really let go and maybe trust in something higher than yourself with Mars conjunct Neptune where you need to stop fighting and where you need to really like look at things in a, a bigger way right there could also be something that you're surrendering to in terms of where you're going your goals your career where you're headed you know your, your long-term goals your future etc so so yeah that's really what i'm seeing for you gemini uh, definitely a lot of possible healing uh, maybe taking it easier on yourself on your body um, if you have any issues or ailments that you need checked out really looking into that i'm not a health professional or anything i'm just saying astrologically with the lunar eclipse in your sixth house this could definitely be bringing up some karmic issues that you're resolving in terms of these things you know where you have certain karmic debts that uh, you need to face that you've put off right and that are possibly keeping you from living the life that you want or you know taking the next step in your education or your future or you know what you feel your purpose is or whatever the case may be so let me know down below gemini if this resonates if not please let me know what you are experiencing with this lunar eclipse i'd love to hear about it if you don't already make sure to follow me on instagram and facebook uh, if you have instagram and facebook or sign up for my email list so you can stay in the loop with everything that i'm doing i'd love to have you and uh yeah if you'd like to work with me further or get other content and stuff from me see the description down below to figure out how to do that and i will see you guys in my other videos we are going to move on to cancer so <clears throat> for cancer this lunar eclipse is happening in your fifth house cancer so this is really bringing up a lot of you know shadow behaviors with self-sabotage in terms of things that you do for fun or things that you may take to extremes when it comes to having fun you know drinking partying like maybe gambling or you know like shadow behaviors that you may have that you may need to face in terms of having fun also sex and sexuality and anything that you do for pleasure or joy that maybe could be taken a little bit too far or could become toxic right now for some of you this could also be bringing up like disturbances in terms of you know sexuality or things that like old wounds insecurities feelings of lack blockages that need to be faced in terms of your inner child and in terms of what's really blocking your heart you know so you've been really focused on creating this life and finding your place in the world and you know friends and networking and groups and finding fulfillment and liberation within that but this is a time where you're really addressing blocks within your creativity and within you know your sexuality and within how you have fun and take and it could be and how that could be becoming toxic if that makes sense so this lunar eclipse is also squaring saturn in your eighth house of finances debt other people's money financial exchanges so you could be feeling held back here in some way or blocked here in some way or it could be feeling a bit stuck here in some way maybe there is you know 
maybe there's something financially going on or there's a certain debt or a feeling of lack or insecurity that you have regarding finances or something like that that you're addressing at this moment. So with Mars and Neptune conjunct trining this, this is really about letting go, delving into some kind of spiritual practice, some kind of healing modality, learning something that really expands you, that really helps you find a more spiritual perspective or a higher purpose or a higher mission this could also be some kind of calling you know that really comes in if you're a cancer rising to do something more right to really do something more to go on a journey to maybe travel or to maybe do something that's really going to give you a sense of meaning and purpose right and that's going to really help you move through these energies so hopefully that makes sense cancer definitely let me know down below if this relates with you i'd really really love to hear your feedback on if it does and how you're noticing these energies coming up make sure to also follow me on instagram and my social medias to keep up with me i post a lot on instagram every single day so definitely make sure to keep up with me over there if you'd like to work with me further i have tons of stuff going on right now definitely see the description below Low, and we are going to move on to Leo. So for Leo, this lunar eclipse is happening in your fourth house, in our fourth house, if you're a Leo rising like me. So this is literally releasing the skeletons in the closet. What in our past or within our family life or within our home life have we been putting off or not facing or not looking at? What within our roots do we need to face, right? There can be maybe some secrets or some past things, maybe some family secrets or, you know, some, some past karmic patterns or some past karmic wounds or insecurities or karmic debts that are really coming to the surface. This gives a lunar eclipse where you may be feeling like pulled within a little bit more. There may be more of a focus on your family and home life, your roots, your foundation. Uh, you know, that might, may need your attention for some reason. You know, you have been really creating and building this life that you want in the world, right? Like you've been really making a statement and putting yourself out there and really focused on your career and like being liberated in terms of your career and your future and your success and the legacy that you want to leave behind and, you know, your reputation and your branding and all of that. And you've also been likely feeling a little bit held back in terms of your relationships or stifled in terms of your relationship. Maybe, you know, um, you have certain close relationships or a significant other or whatever that's just been feeling like, you know, you're not sure if it's really going anywhere or if you can see a, a future with them or if you can really continue to to work on, you know, all of these things that you're building towards. Like if you're working, if all the future goals you're working on, like if they can fit into that or if they are maybe holding your energy back from that or if maybe they are not really understanding in some way, right? And so there can be a little bit of disconnection for some Leo risings in terms of the relationship sector. And so, or in terms of, it may not even be like a significant other, maybe it's friendships, you know? There's definitely some, some tension there where something feels stuck in terms of a relationship or something feels disconnected and it feels like it may be almost like not fitting in anymore with the life that you're trying to build for yourself, right? And you're not really sure what to do or how to move forward with it. So with this lunar eclipse though happening in Scorpio, this can be really exposing a lot with this and exposing maybe some truths or bringing things to the surface that you need to face maybe emotionally or process emotionally or even old wounds from the past that you need to really face old blockages that you need to work through that you need to shed it's like dead weight that you need to shed that's like keeping you anchored which is stopping you from expanding like you really want to so once you're able to face these things then you're able to expand towards your career and do all the things that you want to do focus on your goals focus on the things that you want liberate yourself and and you know free yourself with the life that you want and create the life that you want so hopefully that resonates leo uh, I would really love to hear your feedback and if you are experiencing these things and if not, what are you experiencing with this lunar eclipse? Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post on there all the time. That is where you can keep up with me the best. I also have a Patreon and I also have other things that I'm doing. So if you'd like to work with me further, definitely see the description below for all of that. I love you, Leo, and we are going to move on to Virgo. So for Virgo risings, this lunar eclipse is happening in your third house of communication, your local environment, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, your day-to-day -day events, your day-to-day -day activities. 
the people, places, and things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So this lunar eclipse could definitely be bringing up some deep or intense conversations in your day-to-day -day life or some deep and intense situations in your day-to-day -day life. Maybe some things that you need to face or maybe some triggers that you need to face, some things that you need to work through. And, you know, it's also really exposing where you felt held back or stuck in terms of your job or in terms of work, in terms of your workload, in terms of the things and the responsibilities and the commitments that you've had on a day-to-day -day basis to maintain the life and the lifestyle that you want to have. And so all of this is becoming like very, very clear to you now. And, you know, with the sun and the north node in Taurus in your ninth house, this has been really expanding your belief systems and really looking at your beliefs and, you know, how you can create uh, different beliefs for yourself and different, you know, uh, possibly philosophies or practices for yourself that really help expand you and expand your mind and make you feel like you have a sense of purpose and meaning in the world. And so the Scorpio lunar eclipse is really about, you know, letting go of any baggage and any like small ways of thinking that are holding you back from that, that are holding you back from seeing things on a higher level, from creating you know, a sense of meaning and purpose in your life. And so, but also, you know, where you need to surrender more in terms of relationships or your significant other um, with Mars conjunct Neptune and your seventh. And you're also maybe seeing a certain sense of futility or a certain sense of like, like, you know, Mars Neptune is kind of like, okay, like I'm not fighting or I'm not, like I'm not gonna continue to fight. It's kind of seeing the bigger picture. And so there could be some of that in terms of your relationship or your significant other. And there could be some, you know, moving through difficulty or moving through difficulty with a little bit more ease in terms of your relationship because maybe some truth comes out or maybe it's a chance for you to get kind of vulnerable and express your feelings or an intense, conver an in-depth conversation allows some things to come up, you know? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Virgo. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated for you. And if not, then definitely let me know what you are seeing come up in your life. I'd really be interested to know what you're seeing with this. Uh, if you would like to work with me further, see the description down below for everything I'm doing right now. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post the most over there so you can keep up with me best over there. And we are going to move on to Libra. So Libra, this lunar eclipse is happening in your second house of money, honey. So this is all about your money, what you own, your possessions, you know, what you value, your priorities. And so this Lunar eclipse is really bringing up those topics for you. Where do you feel like you are lacking, insecure, have certain blockages, have certain you know feelings of debt in terms of these things? Where do you need to let go of some of these old hindrances, right? Like some of these, all this old baggage in terms of money or what you owe or something like that. And, you know, you've been really trying to build something more stable for yourself in terms of business, in terms of finances, in terms of, you know, creating things that feel more grounded and more stable and that help you liberate yourself from and financially that help you attain financial freedom. And so this lunar eclipse could be bringing up where you have some worth issues or some blocks around that or some old baggage that needs to be purged or shed, right? Or where your priorities aren't aligned or where there are certain fears etc. So this is also squaring Saturn in your fifth. So there could be something that you feel is holding you back in terms of maybe children, in terms of dating, in terms of fun, love, joy, sex, like all of those things. Like there could be like a block there. You could feel some resistance there uh, in some way. And there's also this lunar eclipse is also trining Mars and Neptune in your sixth house of work, daily routine, maintenance, you know, how you maintain the life that you live, how do you maintain it? And so that, you know, things that you do for work, health, exercise, you know, all of those things fit in there because of that reason. So there may be something you need to surrender to in those things. Maybe you need to give yourself a break. Maybe you need to take some time to rest. Maybe you're seeing where some of your actions have been a little bit futile. You know, maybe they haven't made a lot of sense or maybe you need to uh, let go of some things. You know, maybe you've been doing too much or working too hard and maybe you need to take some time and space for yourself to really rest, let go, surrender uh, and all of that. So hopefully that resonates, Libra. Definitely let me know down below if it does. And if not, let me know what you do see coming up in your life. 
please follow me on Instagram. I post all the time on there. You definitely don't want to miss out. And uh, you can check the description below if you would like to work with me further and see what all I'm doing right now and offering. And with that being said, we are done with this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.